What are the herbs and nutrients that I will commonly recommend to my patients with gallstones? Now remember this video is educational only. It is unwise to work on gallstones on your own. Definitely work with a skilled herbalist or a naturopath. If you lodge a gallstone into your biliary tract, you are almost definitely gonna wind up in the hospital, probably via ambulance, and they are almost definitely going to have to remove your gallbladder um, with an emergency surgery. So if we're talking about the incidence of gallstones, it is actually quite common between 10 to 15% of us, depends on your ethnicity, sometimes higher, depending on ethnicity, sometimes lower, and the vast majority of gallstones are developed from a cholesterol pigment, right? And so when patients come to me, I'm evaluating them for the most common pathophysiology. And my thinking here is the ratio between bile acids, cholesterol, and phospholipids, specifically phosphatidylcholine in the biliary tract. And when we're thinking about the formation of these cholesterol gallstones, we're thinking about a hypersecretion of cholesterol and a hyposecretion, not enough bile acids and phosphatidylcholine to keep that bile thin and fluid and moving to kind of prevent that buildup and that sludge and that hypomotility, poor motility through these tracks. That slow, sluggish sludge then develops into a cholesterol gallstone in your gallbladder. Let's focus on the bile acids first. We'll circle back to the phosphatidylcholine second. On the bile acids front, bile acids are actually made from cholesterol, this kind of pool of cholesterol in the body, and they're made through a 7-alpha hydroxylase enzyme. That's the rate limiting step of converting cholesterol to bile acids and you do need vitamin C that's a cofactor for that enzyme to convert cholesterol to bile acids. It's a really big recommendation that I make to patients with gallstones. I don't think there's a huge amount of risk to onboarding a moderate amount of vitamin C. So it's so funny that bile acids help prevent cholesterol formation stones and they're made from cholesterol. The other side of the equation is the phosphatidylcholine Again, this helps thin the bile, keeps the bile moving at a good clip and prevents that buildup and that sludge and that poor motility that develops into these cholesterol-based gallstones in the gallbladder. Now, phosphatidylcholine is a byproduct or maybe an end product, that's probably a better way to put it, of the methylation cycle. And we could spend the next two weeks talking about the methylation cycle. I'm sure there's gonna be more videos. I talk about it all the time. I used to think that the MTHFR gene was a bit overblown. I still think genetics are probably a little bit overemphasized and diet and lifestyle and nutrition are underemphasized. But the big piece here is that if you have any issues methylating, steps along the way to produce these end products like phosphatidylcholine, then you are going to have a deficiency, not enough phosphatidylcholine that helps to repair your cell walls, that helps to thin the bile and also prevent gallstone formation. There are so many things that limit and reduce methylation. We could cover them for the rest of the day, but I commonly see things like B2 deficiencies, genetic issues around the MTHFR gene, heavy metals can impact it, magnesium deficiency. These are all cofactors and even things that inhibit the steps to methylate and produce phosphatidylcholine. So you might already be guessing what some of the nutrient recommendations that I would make for someone with gallstones would be. I would definitely recommend some form of choline, preferably phosphatidylcholine, and I would definitely recommend a decent dose of vitamin C. 
The other big kind of nutrient side of things that I would recommend would be a good, strong digestive enzyme. And I would be focusing on one that had a decent amount of ox bile in it just to take the load off the system and prevent that need for the bile flow, which is already impacted. It's been impacted for a long time if you've developed a gallstone. So a good, strong digestive enzyme on board with the ox bile. So what are the herbal medicines that I would recommend for gallstone? Now remember, disclaimer and contraindication, these herbs are not for impacted gallstones. They're contraindicated in that condition. Big ones that I would bring in would be boldo, peppermint, chanca piedra, and then I would also be focusing on some of the choleretic and cholagogs, a lot of the bitter herbs. So chamomile, that's really easy to bring in as a nice tea. It's very calming. It's a digestive bitter. The other big one would be dandelion root. Pretty potent cholagog. It's going to get that bile flow stimulated and moving and thin it out a little bit. And then the other really big one that I would bring in would be globe artichoke. So again, that is a hepatoprotective. It's a choleretic, meaning it stimulates more bile production from the liver. And it also is a cholagog, meaning that it's going to stimulate bile flow from the gallbladder into the small bowel as well. Working with your practitioner, you can custom formulate that formula depending on your presentation. If you are dealing with more spasms and cramps, I would be working with herbal spasmolytic and the really big ones there would be things like cramp bark. I don't use a whole lot of cramp bark because you need a really high dose to get a good effect. That's not knocking it, it's a potent herb. You know, the people that do work with it do get good results, but I'm always kind of concerned about all the space that that's gonna take up in a herbal formula. It's again, it's a very high dose herb to get the impacts. Chamomile we mentioned, it's a spasmolytic. Peppermint we mentioned, it's a spasmolytic. And then one we didn't mention, which again, I would use if there's a lot of pain and spasms, would be a herb called Corydalis. We get this one from the Chinese Materia Medica. It's one of the strongest pain-killing herbs that we have in our arsenal. So those are the herbs that I would use. They're in my dispensary and I have a good relationship with these ones. There are a bunch of other ones. You know, I read a lot and I did use a lot of organ grape root when it was more available. I'm finding it hard to get my hands on now. I love it. It's a beautiful bitter alternative. It's a cholagog. Barbary would be another bitter alternative cholagog as well. It's got some antimicrobial properties there too. Other optional additions would be things like milk thistle. And most people have heard and know of milk thistle as this kind of liver protecting herb, which it is hepatoprotective but most people aren't aware of the fact that milk thistle is also a potent, potent cholagog, meaning it is going to stimulate bile flow from the gallbladder. And that's because milk thistle is a little seed. It's a really oily seed. When you grind up milk thistle, you can almost see the oil in the seed. The other cholagog, the other herb that stimulates bile flow that everyone's heard of that most people don't know of as a cholagog is turmeric. So so again, most people think of turmeric as this potent, potent anti-inflammatory, which it is, but it also stimulates bile flow from the gallbladder as well. So if you're thinking about that inflammatory damage and you want to kind of double down on a cholagog with that anti-inflammatory action, turmeric in the mix can be a really good addition to a gallstone formula. Now, if we're talking about diet and lifestyle, it really depends on the severity of your symptoms. If they're just mild symptoms, you know, you eat some fat, you get some gallbladder spasms, maybe the fats run straight through you in a form of fat malabsorption. I say, look, work with the nutrients, work with the herbs, see if we can make some progress. If you're a patient that's dealing with really acute, severe symptoms, I would be a lot firmer on dietary restriction of fats. And also I would recommend bringing up and trying to incorporate more fiber in your diet. Now, one optional addition would be a topical castor oil pack. Again, it would depend on the severity, on my the firmness of my recommendations, but I have seen wonderful, wonderful improvements with topical castor oil and then applying heat 
to the location that would be the gallbladder or the liver just getting that bile flowing and reducing a lot of that inflammation as well it's a little bit of an old school naturopathic recommendation seems a little bit woo woo but clinical practice i have seen some patients improve dramatically when we brought that topical therapy in so i hope that was helpful if you liked it remember to like comment and subscribe and i look forward to seeing you in a future video